guys and welcome back to the channel very excited to be here it's been a while but we're back with a special guest joshua benjamin flex gold my husband because in this video like you guys can tell from the title we're going to be talking about our honeymoon itinerary and sharing where we've been what we were up to our recommendation tips and tricks lessons learned and all the good stuff because I know it's been very highly requested but honestly we had a very good time on our honeymoon so we finally have found time to sit down and film this welcome to the channel how does it feel to be here so great to be are here. you so excited the most excited for this video Amazing. We're going to just start with an overview because in case you are stumbling across today's video and you don't know our honeymoon took place in Italy in October of 2021, which feels like it was a lifetime ago for three weeks. And it was amazing. And we did, where did we start? We did Sicily, Lake Como, Portofino, Tuscany, and Florence. And we're gonna chat about why we picked those places a little bit at the start and just like the logistics of a honeymoon and then we'll jump into the itinerary. So I brought up Lake Como because it's always been a place I wanted to go to. I feel like it's a really special location and also it's obviously an iconic wedding location. So since we got married in Toronto, I was like, why don't we just honeymoon in Lake Como? We were, we were excited about going to Italy again because we'd been to Italy and we were in Italy in 2018, but we'd only done We'd done the south, so we had done the Amalfi Coast, and we did Rome. Mm -hmm. And we didn't um, want to do those again. And we didn't want to do those locations again, so there's just a lot of great places that um, we've heard um, are great to visit in Italy. We got married in September of 2021, September 2nd, and we wanted to honeymoon shortly after. We didn't even have anything booked. Yeah. <laughs> we did not have right. anything booked. We were really focused on the wedding. We looked at ourselves and we said, okay, like we need to figure this out now. And that, Honestly, it was a bit stressful because to... it all fell on Joshua's shoulders. Yeah, it was until a bit... 48 hours before where I decided to jump in. Yeah, and just give my two no, cents. it was stressful to do it that last minute. Yeah, but it was possible. I mean, we pulled it off and it was great. Or we'll give you little like tips and lessons learned throughout the video, but I think the first one is to give yourself time yeah. to plan the honeymoon. Well, I would say the only reason we didn't was because of COVID and we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. So that's why we didn't plan so far in advance. So if you are going to plan in advance, all I would suggest, if it's a trip of this nature and it's that big and you're spending money, to have some flexibility in terms of yeah. changing your dates, flights, hotels. Good one. That's really important. I do want to say that our approach to this honeymoon was kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. We decided to splurge more than we normally do and that this was a really special occasion and we wanted to really treat ourselves. So that was our approach. You could definitely do it differently, but in case you're watching this video, just know that this is like a live your best life kind of itinerary. So with that, let's get into the itinerary. The way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna introduce each main stop of our honeymoon and then kind of talk about our travel to and from there, how many days we spent there and main activities that we did. So then it's over to you guys to kind of obviously if you're planning a honeymoon or a girl's trip or whatever Euro trip um, you're watching this video for, you know our favorite spots, maybe some things we didn't think were worth the hype and then you guys can kind of plan as you will. So our first stop on the honeymoon was Sicily in the south because it was the hottest and we took a flight from Toronto to CTA which is in Catania in Sicily. That was the closest airport but we did have a layover in Amsterdam because I don't believe there are direct flights. Is that the reason? Yeah and there are multiple airports in, in Sicily so based off of our hotel we landed in the airport that was closest to the hotel it was like an hour drive to Tormina yeah. where we stayed one thing I do want to note is Josh and I spontaneously upgraded our flights to first class when we got to the airport kind of like in the whim of the moment we're on a honeymoon let's pop some champagne and kick it off to a great start which definitely elevated our experience that flight was amazing it was so much fun it was a really nice way to start the honeymoon so I actually would recommend doing that if you can afford it I think Obviously, like we don't travel first class normally, so it was a unique experience for us, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'd never flown first class business class before, so. Yeah, I have a video of yeah. your reaction to the, nice. to the chair reclining back, yeah. and you're just like freaking out how low it goes. So, anyway, we landed in Catania, and we had a car service booked to take us from 
the airport to our hotel, which they were great. So I'm gonna link them below. As for our length of time there, we had five days. It was our longest stop. Our rationale here was we wanted to start the, the honeymoon off like very relaxing um, rather than like tourist attraction, just more so just chilling at the beach. And we wanted to give ourselves a good amount of time. So we had five full days. As for our hotel, we checked in at the Mazzaro Sea Palace, which I want to talk about a little bit before we jump into what we did in Sicily. We walked in, or we when we checked in, sorry, it was nighttime, so we really didn't see much. So when we woke up the next morning and we actually had a room with a sea view, which I absolutely recommend for Tarmina and if you can throughout the honeymoon, I think that's another tip. If you can have a nice view to wake up to, for me personally, it just really elevated the experience and made it that much more special. But anyway, we woke up the next morning in Tarmina in the Mazzara Sea Palace after we checked in and saw just like the beach and Italy and it was such a cool feeling. I remember being like, where are we? Pinch me, it was stunning. The rooms are nice, they're a little bit outdated but it is like an Italian older hotel, which I think was kind of nice. It just is like a part of the experience. Um, but the actual grounds of the hotel are stunning. The beach is really, really nice. The beach chairs are comfortable. The pool is stunning. You kind of have the view of actually the Belmont Hotel as you're swimming, which isn't bad, and the ocean, which is beautiful. Breakfast was stunning. Room service was very mediocre to not great, honestly, which that was a little bit of a disappointment at this hotel because you'd expect the food to be top notch, but the breakfast was good. So as for our itinerary in Sicily, we had one day where we went up to the town. The first day we actually took a cab there instead of the cable cart, which was literally a two second walk from our hotel and a lot cheaper, but I was scared. We did end up taking the cable cart yeah. though the rest of the yeah. time, so that was fine. So anyway, we spent one day in the town it actually was raining on our first day, which I want to talk about weather quick because we were very hesitant about weather in Tarmina when we landed there. We actually saw the forecast calling for rain for our whole time there. So we actually talked about rerouting our trip and going to Portofino and like changing everything around. But I'm so happy we did not because one, we ended up having a really good time that one day in the rain. It only rained actually one day, so I'm very happy about that. But also, it ended up being sunny majority of the time or a whole time there aside from that one day so another tip is do not chase weather on your honeymoon yeah because it'll drive you crazy and i would just say generally like a lot of people are i'm sure wondering like was it a good time to go to italy in october like it was beautiful depending what the climate you're coming from for us like we're coming from toronto so like a lot of the days, it was somewhere between 20 to maybe 25 the degrees. Weather, yeah. yeah, like it was hot. It like, was nice. It wasn't like, at the start of the trip, it was hot. In Sicily, it was hot. We were on the beach. We were like, you could swim Schwitzing. completely hot. Schwitzing, Schwitzing, um, sweating. <laughs> and then the majority of the rest of the trip, like it was, it was very yeah. nice weather. And it's also less touristy. I know they yeah. say the best time for traveling to Italy is actually like May and September, like not the, top of the summer. But anyway, back to the itinerary. So in the town, we had a really nice lunch at a restaurant called Il Cislope. I don't know. Um, we'll put it on the screen. It was nothing crazy. We actually stumbled upon it because it was raining and we sat down, had wine, had pasta, and had a really nice time. But it was just like good food. I think they the term is the dolce vita is that what it is i guess yeah like the good life like or the sweet life like i i think a, a big part of it is like you really want to just take your time and enjoy things that you normally wouldn't like yeah. oftentimes in our busy lives like you go to a restaurant you want to eat to leave to do something next and like that was that's what was nice on the first day like and i think it like just set a good precedent it was like we were there to enjoy and we went to a restaurant we took our time we drank we also got a limoncello shot which is not a shot you're supposed to drink it slowly as a delicacy but we didn't know that so that was sabotage tiktok called me out for it the rest of the days you really hung out by the pool yeah and by the beach yes there was one restaurant next to our hotel like you could literally walk there barefoot it's between our hotel and the belmont hotel it's called lido la Pina, and we had an amazing calzone there salads it was so good you just sit there it's really casual you overlook the ocean it's just like and a casual life spot an amazing amazing best of my life recommendation though for a restaurant is called Danino and I have to give Michelle Fusino a shout out for that. Hi Mish, love you so much. Um, she recommended it to us because she was actually in Tarmina like a week before us and this spot, Danino, is the best, mark my words, the best Italian food I have ever had in my entire life and existence. 
very bold statement. It's a small restaurant, I think it's family owned. You take the cable car up to the town and it's literally, you turn left, walk two minutes and it's there. We went there two nights in a row. Yeah. We got the ravioli, we got arribiata, we got Sicilian white wine, tuna carpaccio, amazing. The truffle was always sold out, we were always late, so I do have to go back and try that. I'm gonna insert a video here of me drinking the leftover sauce of my pasta because it was so good. So anyway, that was an amazing restaurant. So the next stop of the honeymoon was Lake Como, and I think maybe we should throw up a map here for a sec. Over needs on. Okay. Is there Sicily, which is in the south of Italy, and then our next stops were all close, well, the north, Como's in the north, Milan's in the north of Italy, and then our choice was to continue down by car down to uh, Tuscany and Florence, and okay. Portofino too, but Talking like, map. yeah. So to get to Lake Como, we took a flight to Milan, and we took EasyJet, yeah. which we had an amazing experience with. If you're doing short distance flights, in Europe, they're very cost efficient. Every flight we took, they were on time, professional. If you buy the tier up from economy, you get like, so, there's there's some ability, like uh, you're limited on your bags if you buy economy. So that's what's important with these low cost carriers to make sure that you have the baggage coverage that you need. And but if, you, if you buy the step up, then you get the bags, you get, uh, priority boarding. It just was super easy super and super smooth. Super smooth. So yeah, we definitely recommend Easy Jet. Yeah, and also um, for you guys to follow me on Instagram and have seen the outfits, which I will break down on TikTok probably around the time that this video goes live. I had a lot of bags. I had two full size suitcases full to the brim, so I needed the extra baggage. At the end of the day, it like it it, it was a couple hundred dollars difference for her to have to bring it or not, and if that made you happy and made her enjoy more and have more flexibility on the trip. It wasn't the biggest deal. So yeah, I'm glad that she brought her it was, second bag. It was worth it for the looks. Yeah. Once we landed in Milan, Josh wanted to drive to Lake Como. And like he said, we had like a little bit of a driving travel plan between all of our locations. So we did rent a car and spontaneously Josh upgraded to a convertible. Yeah, I believe we got the car from Europe car. When you land land in Milan's central or main airport, mm -hmm. they have a ton of different rental places. We made a reservation prior for one car, uh, but again, like we wanted a convertible. The convertible wasn't available online. So when I got there, I just asked and it was. So we changed to a convertible, which is great and a lot of fun. The other recommendation with driving, two things. Firstly, is your, if you're coming from Canada and I believe the US, you need your international driver yes. permit. And I only figured that out literally like two days before, um, which was a bit stressful. stressful. Um, but getting that within Canada is very easy. Um, if you just Google it, it was not tough. There's a location downtown. You pay like 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is. And they, they get you an international driving permit. I don't know the process. Um, if you're in the US, just make sure you have it. Although no one asked for that. They just asked for my license. But technically if you were stopped by the police, they would ask for it and you could have issues. I wouldn't uh, recommend people not to drive. Like you can drive in Italy. It's not very difficult if you're a confident driver. The only thing that I would specifically suggest is that when you are in a main city like Milan or Florence, you don't need your car. Yeah. So like you'll see we rented our car and essentially uh, the purpose of our car was to get from one town to the next town to the next town. And off we went to our hotel, which was the Grand Hotel Tremezzo in Lake Tremezzo. Como. In Tremezzo, you're right. Yes. Because a little bit about Lake Como and what the area is, it's basically a stunning lake full of like villas all around it. So I'll have a map here again and I'll point to where we stayed, which I love the area. I'll talk about obviously what we did throughout our stay, but I guess let's start with the hotel itself, the Grand Hotel Tremezzo. That hotel was so stunning queen. It was like literally out of a movie. We first of all pulled up in a convertible, which already made us feel bougie. And it was like a really out of a movie experience on top of like Lake Como being like the most scenic backdrop I've ever seen in my life. Um, the hotel is five stars. It's definitely a splurge, but it is stunning. Um, it's situated right on the lake, so it's beautiful. They have amazing grounds, an amazing pool with the backdrop of Lake Como. Well, the pool, the, what's really cool about the pools in Lake Como is they're pools that are actually with, on the lake. So yeah, so I, they have like, two pools. It's like a, 
it's like a dock floating and inside there's a pool so the water's filtered and you're like swimming in the lake but it's a pool it's it's like you've seen pictures yeah I'm sure so they had they had Instagram. two pools they had one pool in the lake and one pool like in the back of the hotel they had a tennis court they had yeah. beautiful rooms the balconies again i would highly recommend a view of lake como for lake como this is somewhere i think you absolutely need it yeah. for the experience yeah. it was amazing so in terms of the length of time that we had in como we had two full days, but essentially it was three full days because we got there one day in the afternoon. We stayed there at night, then we had two full days. Two full days, and then we left in the afternoon the day after. So that first night after we checked in, we cleaned up and then we actually got drinks at the bar that's like on the water and by that like pool in the water as part of the hotel, which was beautiful. And the reason we also got drinks is because we had dinner reservations at the hotel's restaurant for like a fine dining restaurant. Um, and we were ready early, so we're like, let's go get drinks. And I think it really, no, the it was drinks a really were, fun no, the, night. No, the, the drinks were great. Night. It was a lot of fun. And then for the two full days, we had a one day where we took the ferry to visit Bellagio and Verena, which are towns kind of like across the lake from where we we're staying. I want to talk about the ferry because I know when we were looking up Lake Como, I didn't understand how you like get around and what is there to do in Lake Como. So I thought you had to take one of those like water taxi boats across. You don't need to do that. The ferry is so accessible. It's so much more affordable. It pretty much stops everywhere around yeah. the lake. Well, there's multiple ferries. There's multiple ferries and it's actually like, it's a beautiful view. It doesn't matter if you're on a boat or like on a ferry. It was so easy, accessible yeah. and beautiful. So the one day we went to Bellagio first, we walked around, it's like a cute little town, obviously very shops, famous. Shops. Yeah, restaurants. shops, restaurants. We had lunch there, nothing crazy, so I don't even remember the restaurant. And then we hopped back on the ferry and went to Verena, which is another town, which was really, really nice. And yeah. we just like walked around. We actually sat by the water there, got coffee, yeah, got some snacks. It was really fun. And then that night we ended up going back to the hotel because we were kind of exhausted after a full day out. Then we got room service and the room service at Tremezzo is stunning queen. It is so good in comparison to obviously the uh, Mazzaro Sea Palace in Tarmina, which was bad. The room service at Tremezzo, 10 out of 10. Our next and second day in Lake Como was a little bit different. We booked a boat tour through the hotel to kind of take us through the lake. So I'll talk about that in a second. But we spontaneously were offered to do a private tour of Villa Sol Chabiati, uh, which is this insane property affiliated with the Tremezzo Hotel. I don't know if it's available to book um like publicly they kind of offered it to us which was amazing a private tour of that was like a dream i know berta a famous wedding dress designer had one of her shoots there and as i was shopping for wedding dresses i obviously came across those photos so when i realized that was the same place as this iconic shoot i was like pinch me now obviously wore white to the occasion photo here it was amazing there is a lot of famous villas in like como that you can tour some of them are owned by celebrities villa balbianella oh yeah villa Bo yeah that's the one that's a famous one i actually do regret not visiting it but we kind of got the villa excursion out of our system by having this private tour. So that's what Como is known for is the villas. Yeah. And there's a lot of private residences that are people's private villas. And a lot of famous people like George Clooney and Richard Branson live there. They, I mean, they have, I don't know if they live there full time. They, but have, they, have, they, own they have homes villa there. Can't really. um, but there are a lot of public villas that used to be private that are now available to see um, as, like, like a, as a museum. So after the villa tour, we were running late to our boat tour, but the company we had our tour with was amazing and so was our Captain Carlo. The company was called Bardinelli Taxi Boats. I'll have everything again linked below. He was so sweet. We were like half an hour to an hour late and he still gave us an hour and a half time slot. He's a really nice man. He's such a nice man. He explained the whole lake to us as we drove by villas. He was pointing at them, kind of explaining them to us. It was obviously a private tour, so it was just Josh and I and Carlo on the boat, a little love triangle. Carlo took some photos for us. I brought myself a timer, insert photos here. It was really, really nice. Yeah, and that, again, I don't remember the pricing, but that might have been like around $650. It's not, Lake Como's not cheap. Yes, I, yeah, not that cheap. was not a, it was not cheap, but would I say it's worth it? Yeah, it was really nice. 
Then that night we had a very busy day that day and we had dinner reservations at Villa Dest, which is another really famous hotel in like Lake Como. We were recommended to go there for dinner because it's just supposedly magnificent grounds and atmosphere. Yeah, at the same time, it's very proper and conservative and the crowd is definitely older. To go to Villa Dest, we went to dinner and I was, you have to wear a jacket, um, like a suit jacket as a man. Mm -hmm. um, and you wore your like I wore gown. like a full on like YSL gown. Like, we were going James every... Bond style. Yes. We drove there with the top down on yeah. the convertible, like truly lived it up. And it was a really, really nice experience. But in terms of where I want to stay, I like a little more laid back and it was nice to just go there for a meal and see the grounds and like the garden where you got that picture is crazy. Stunning, yeah. And the dinner was really nice too. Again, it was very fine dining vibes. Um, there were like six waiters on you at all time, which was like an interesting experience. I've never been to a restaurant like that where yeah. literally you put down your fork and they just like pick it up. They're always like serving you. It was crazy. But that was pretty much our time in Como. The next morning we were supposed to leave. So we started walking around by foot because we haven't done that yet, just around the hotel. Then realized it was actually really hot and we've yet to go to the pool or didn't get a chance to go to the pool. So we ended up leaving later than planned and spending that day actually until sunset by the pool of the hotel, which is heated by the way. So it was amazing and it was actually hot. Um, we ordered pizza and stuff by the pool, which was really nice. They also give you these complimentary little ice cream cubes, which were amazing. I don't know why they're my highlight, but they were so good. And then our next stop was Portofino. So we picked up our car and we headed to Milan. I do want to mention too, in Milan, we stayed at the Crown Plaza. So a very different experience than like the hotels we stayed at so far on our trip. And I remember at the start, I was like, what? You're going to kill our strike. Like, we're going to go stay at the Crown Plaza. But honestly, that's a great tip to save money. You're in between stops. You don't need a crazy hotel for sure, especially for a place like Milan where we were out of the hotel the whole time. Like we weren't there to be on the beach or by the pool and enjoy the hotel's amenities. We were literally in, in Milan, the city, yeah. in the city. So we checked in that night. We had dinner at um, Baghetto, which was great. Super popular, definitely book in advance because I don't even know how we got reservations. It was packed. Yeah. And then the next morning, we actually ended up shopping in the Galleria, which is next to Il Domo. Yeah. Um, so there's outdoor shopping. The Galleria is more like high-end shopping, but we spent the day there and I'm really happy we did because I've never been to Milan. So it actually was another stop on our honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Right before sunset, we went back to the hotel, checked out, and then started our drive to Portofino. In Portofino, we chose to stay at the Imperial Palace Hotel. It had very good reviews. It was also a five-star hotel. It wasn't directly in Portofino. The main tourist attraction of Portofino where you see uh, all the pictures is a really small area in town. So it was just a little, like maybe a 10 minute drive yeah. away. The hotel room itself was really nice. It was nice. It, it was actually big. was really it nice. Was spacious. Very spacious. What I was going to say too before we move on from the hotel is the breakfast at this hotel was the nicest breakfast out of all of our hotels in Italy in terms of like the scenery. It was like this is what I picture breakfast to look like in heaven. It was phenomenal and they also had Nutella croissants. Yeah, it was a great Which breakfast. is super important to me and something I truly value. So I really enjoyed this, that. They made the omelets, omelets, omelet station, yeah. lots. It was really, really cheese. nice. The only downside to the hotel is the cab ride to Portofino, which we had, I should say, one full day in Portofino. So we checked in one night, had one full day, and then left the next day in the morning. So that one full day, we obviously took a cab to the main port of Portofino. And that cab ride, I remember you saying, was expensive. Yeah, it was like 80 or 90 euros for like Because they know. 15, they just know they can charge it back. But the first thing we did when we got to the port, which is like this beautiful beautiful little like port on the water. You guys have seen photos of this for sure. We went and hiked to Castello Brown, which is a castle essentially and a viewpoint at the top of the mountain overlooking the main port of Portofino um, for like a viewpoint. But it wasn't that bad of a hike. There's a worse hike on our honeymoon that we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that bad. I was wearing flip-flops. I was fine. We got there. We saw the view. It was beautiful. I would recommend it. We didn't tour the castle, but it was very nice. After Castello Brown, we got pretty hungry and we thought of maybe eating in the restaurants by the water. A lot of the things, a lot of the restaurants, sorry, look great, but some of you guys recommended to me on Instagram this like hole in the wall, family owned restaurant in the back of the town um, called Trattoria Concordia. That was so not an Italian accent, I'm so embarrassed. Anyway, I'll link again all the restaurants below, but that restaurant was amazing. Just homemade quality Italian food, super good, would recommend. 
And then by the time we were done, we were full and tired. We got ice cream. Um, we got our cab to kind of drop us off a little bit before the hotel, got ice cream and walked back up to get changed for dinner. So dinner in Portofino, I'll let Josh explain because I think that was one of the highlights of your trip. So for certain restaurants, for the fancier restaurants, we did we booked reservations before. So one of them was the restaurant at the Belmond mm -hmm. in Portofino. There are actually two Belmonts in Portofino. There's one close to the water as well one that's up in the hills yeah we had heard that the one in the hills is the spot to go for Hi. dinner it's belmont splendido is the one that we want is at the top splendido yeah belmont splendido yes highly recommend doing dinner or just going here um specifically dinner though because you get there and you're on like the edge of this cliff and Basically, there's a bar live music and so yeah, we were sitting there. We got drinks. There was finger food live music There's a guy playing the piano Josh and was singing. living his best Best yeah, life. you can you can do you can ask for like we asked for a request of a song that I wanted and yeah It just was a really casual like just super nice beautiful um, Experience yeah, I remember feeling like we were in a Disney movie because at one point we sat there and the moon was shining It was reflecting on the water live music. We obviously dressed up. I wear my fairy dress yeah. Hence why clothing was such an important part of the honeymoon. Yeah, um, I also remember things by outfits I'm just saying but anyway it was so nice. Dinner was really good too. I remember it being good. I don't remember it being the like service exceptional. Was, the service was really good. Yeah. yeah, but the food itself was good. But I yeah. don't remember being like, oh my god, that I, was the best pasta I've ever had. I think it was also there was a lot of. I think a lot of the options included meat or right. shellfish, and we don't we, we don't, don't eat, eat that. that so. so I think we were a little limited if you're a vegetarian. Yeah. So that was our last night in Portofino. The next morning we woke up and we're headed off to Tuscany um, yes. and had breakfast, of course, because we wouldn't miss those chocolate croissants. Okay, battery died, so back here we go. So our next spot was Tuscany, and on the way to Tuscany, we obviously drove there and decided to stop and see the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which I think was a really nice touch because another spot, another iconic moment in Italy. And FYI, we left our luggage in the car. It was okay. Someone's very worried to I do was, that. Well, yeah, I didn't want to leave our convertible. Uh, yes, with, well, no, it wasn't The convertible a, okay, was shut, shut, but. The convertible was shut. But still, I feel like it's easier to break into convertibles. Yes, so. we knew we were going to be there for a short period of time. We'd never seen the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It made, I was like, I don't want to miss this. Let's see it. So it's on the way. It was so yes. fun. We parked our car. We got pizza actually from one of the little shops next to the Leaning Tower Pizza. So then we got back in the car and we drove to Tuscany, which is a really easy, scenic, beautiful drive to Tuscany itself. Maybe the drive was two hours, but then to our hotel, which was kind of like in the top of the mountain, middle of nowhere in Tuscany, um, was a little bit longer. But our hotel was Castello di Picarello. <laughs> and I want to talk about that hotel because it was absolutely magnificent. 10 out of 10 I would recommend. And this was actually a very last minute like booking that we did yes. in Tuscany. We didn't know where we wanted to stay. So this hotel particularly situated like a top of a hill and one of the hills in Tuscany really like, I want to say like in the middle of nowhere, we were, as we're driving there, we were like, where are we going? I was surprised we still had service and Waze was bringing us to the right spot. Um, but from the second you get there, they have like these big gates that open and bring you in to the private property. Um, it was actually an old castle-ish um, from like the 1800s or something that they actually then renovated and made a hotel and then started building other little properties around it. So it's a private property. It's about like nine rooms total. Yes. It's very like boutique style, but super luxurious and beautiful and authentic. We stayed in one of the rooms that is actually like its own villa. I'll have the name here on the screen and again, everything will be linked below. So it was two floors. We had our own courtyard, our own like picnic table right next to the property's pool with like the most amazing view. It was massive. You really rarely saw anyone. You, you may as like well have alone. been there by yourself. Yeah. Um, and it was super relaxing and it just was, yeah, it was, it was such a vibe. Yeah, we also checked in right at sunset. So obviously photos, videos here of seeing the property for the first time during the most magnificent sunset ever. Yeah. We were just like in awe, it was so beautiful. And what I didn't realize, I guess, because I just did limited research, I knew this place was amazing. I was recommended it by a few people on Instagram. I didn't know it was such an, a 
like such a hot spot until honestly after a wedding that I realized it's like yeah. really well known. I think it's like a top 50 hotel in the world. I didn't know that. Apps. I just thought it was like yeah. unbelievably beautiful. What I didn't realize, it's like a full on experience when you're there. So dinner, for example, our first night was in their dining hall, which is essentially like every guest or every couple that stays there eats in the same dining hall, sometimes even at the same like one long table. Yeah. Um, but it's essentially to like a private chef. They grow their own ingredients in the morning. They actually told us they have a chicken that lays eggs that they then cook with. Condensed menu, really good food. And you just, well, I would say it's because it's so secluded, You like we expect it, we go yeah. there and we go eat in different places around, but it's really secluded. So it doesn't Which make we didn't sense. Realize. We didn't realize, but it was actually really nice. It yeah. doesn't make sense to take your car and drive like 45 minutes to get lunch. Like every meal we had there and I think every everyone everyone did that and every meal was phenomenal and yeah it was like the property has e-bikes that you can like get for free and take on a little tour in the vineyards that are next to the property yeah. um it was like a 20 minute bike ride away and one day we took the car went for a drive just in tuscany in the convertible with the roof down because why not oh fun fact they also have a property dog her name is uva which is italian for grape and she was just there a little golden retriever labrador i believe we watched the stars with her one night yeah can't wait to go back to, yeah 100 percent we'll go back to i'm um, kind of getting emotional thinking yeah. about it it was so fun it was yeah. definitely one of the highlights of our trip like tied with como because they're such different extremes but yeah. both like so unique yes i honestly think if there was one thing i would recommend out of our if you had to do one place and one hotel throughout our whole honeymoon this would be the recommendation yeah as I, it's like own trip even i agree so anyway we had three full days at in tuscany and then left on the fourth day and that to was florence which is really close to tuscany um so it was like an hour and a half ish drive yeah really scenic views you actually ended up taking a nap on the way there because you were exhausted for some yeah, reason yeah. from just relaxing yeah the last four days but then we returned our car at the florence airport and then we took a cab and checked into our hotel in florence which was the kalimala hotel 10 out of 10 recommendation for florence different vibe than all the other hotels i don't know if it was i think it was like a four-star hotel it was more casual but it it's was right in right in the heart yeah. yeah of the city amazing amazing location incredible customer service honestly yeah. it was clean it smelled great i'm very picky with hotels my friends would laugh if they're seeing this i loved it the rooms i know you mentioned were like or i remember you saying they were like on the smaller side which like yeah. didn't bother me the closets were pink fun fact they had great croissants in the morning what 100 percent recommend it to you guys and, then, and again, the price was very affordable. Yeah, very affordable too, that's true. Like at that point, we kind of knew, like we knew in like, for us, like we said, like the Sicily Hotel, Tremezzo, and then Tuscany were the main hotels and anywhere else we stayed, whether it was Milan, Portofino, here, like we were a little, we were more prepared to be more flexible in terms of where we stayed. Yeah. But this hotel was great. You don't need more than that. Like we spent, again, the whole time outside like walking around the streets Florence, except yeah. for one day that it was raining and we binged you on netflix the whole season yeah. but in terms of our time in florence we had one day that was kind of like our gallery day so we went to the Fizi gallery um which i think we would definitely recommend getting a tour for um yeah. as a tip specifically for that gallery but in general like if you're going somewhere like a gallery it's nice to have explanation to the art personally at least for us we appreciate it but I wanted to know what the, the tour guides around us were saying, so we would kind of like eavesdrop and go yeah. near different groups. Yeah, it's just the history is obviously very rich and yeah. like appreciating the art at face value you can do, but to understand where the art, who the artist is, um, the period it comes from, um, I think would elevate that experience. I would also do, honestly, one of my recommendations is a day tour in Florence because there's so much like history in the city that sure. we looked at and we just didn't know what was what and we'd like Google it up and yeah. whatever. If there's so many like statues, I would love to know more about yeah, Florence. Yeah, you could definitely do that's a, a like a walking tour yeah, across that's what I mean. Florence that would be great. Yeah. Um, so we did that gallery. It was really nice. Would recommend it. We also went to the Michelangelo Gallery, the L'Academia. That's just like saw, a famous the famous yeah. michelangelo david sculpture sculpture which super cool could do a tour there i didn't feel like it was as needed because i just wanted to appreciate the statue yeah but um would have been cool but definitely recommend doing that so we went to the gucci museum on another day which i wouldn't recommend no pass yeah pass 
like wasn't bad it just wasn't great it was underwhelming yeah one night we also hiked up to piazza michelangelo which is Viewpoint. one heck of a hike though yeah. that hike was hard we also walked there, which like we crossed the bridge, walked there and then climbed up. It's a viewpoint of all of Florence, really nice. We went there just in time for sunset. We picked up olives, chips, and some drinks on the way and you sit on these like big stairs. There was a lot of people sitting there um, and just watch the sunset. Um, there's also a really cute couple I photographed there. They were like the most iconic, like Pinteresty couple sitting on the ledge of, anyway whatever that was a moment um so i would definitely recommend doing that it seems like it's a touristy thing but even a friend who lives in florence or a colleague who lives in florence said you have to do it it's beautiful like you'll have a great time so i agree so we went to a breakfast spot called artisanal which i believe is coming to toronto they told us but it's more so like an american like breakfast spot we were just craving avocado toast and pancakes yes and coffee i know we didn't go here but there's also a breakfast spot we thought of going in the louisa the aroma store oh yeah well i went there for the meeting yeah you, it, yeah. yeah the the restaurant inside the louisa the aroma store um is amazing they have really cool like american food but also just like really cool dishes and it was really good from what i had there so that's a good one um, we also went to the famous sandwich shop, the Atlantico Veneo, which had a lineup on two sides of the street. I think there were like two places you could order. Is this, I don't and it's the sandwich shop that you see on TikTok, like the one. With, yeah, it's like yeah. just sandwiches. It's actually known for meat sandwiches. So Josh and I obviously got vegetarian options. The one with the portobello mushrooms was phenomenal. We got two to like split. I ended up wanting that whole thing for myself because yeah. it was so good worth the hype and really good because you can kind of pick it up and continue walking you don't have to sit down and eat so that was a good one another really good restaurant was the pear gnocchi at or pear ravioli sorry at la Giostra, which we went to at like an off time so it was empty but really cool decor really really good ravioli really interesting to put pear and ravioli but it worked and then we also had dinner at zaza which we somehow got reservations for i know you have to usually book in advance but that was really good too we yeah. sat outside had a wine yeah would recommend good, that, that one dinner. two of the nights we went to a pizza spot that's really casual it'll be linked below but again be prepared like there will be a line yeah wait it's worth it it wasn't even it that bad it moves pretty quick and the pizza was yeah uh, maybe the best pizza and yeah and that was pretty much our time in florence when we were done we actually took a train to milan so we didn't train the duration of our honeymoon because it was a little bit more complicated and i had a lot of bags but it did make sense for us to take a train back to milan which where we were catching our next flight from to our next destination which i know a lot of you guys on instagram think we had a two-month honeymoon because we did um germany and portugal and israel after but that was more so work related and i crashed josh's work trip anyway yeah we stayed at the hilton that one night again to save money until the next day when our flight was we did have that morning still in milan and actually we stumbled across across um a coffee and croissant shop that was amazing called loria just by choice we actually went to another breakfast spot but it was closed so we walked down the street saw a bunch of locals just having coffee and pastries outside of this restaurant so we it's a little joined them. it's a little out of the way it's not like near the milan yeah. hotspots but it was it was it very was so it was good great. it was like amazing coffee and amazing pastries and croissants so i do want to mention that because yeah. i feel like it was a local spot yeah, I feel yeah. like a local yes it wasn't a tourist spot um and yeah and then we went back to the hotel checked out packed or i guess packed our bags checked out and that was the end of the honeymoon yes so before we're done what was your highlight my two favorite places were como and, and tuscany. tuscany like what was your highlight was it portofino like drinks i think that belmont? night was probably that portofino drinks at belmont was like maybe the highlight i i just had such a nice night yeah and my highlight um i'm gonna ask myself I really don't know. I honestly, it was just like a dream trip for me. And I was telling Josh as a joke, like, is this the peak and the rest of our life is just like going down now from the sunny moon? I hope not. We'll have to do an amazing trip Definitely somewhere else. Not. A lot more of the world we want to see. Anyway, that was, or that is our honeymoon itinerary. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. 
and I'll be doing a lot more like quicker take honeymoon content on TikTok. I'm really excited. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this now when we've been back for a few months, but I finally have the time. So I'm excited to break down my outfits for the honeymoon and the wedding and just like cute bite-sized little videos from the honeymoon. So make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram as well if you want to. I'll be there. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank You've you been a pleasure me. to work with and Thank a pleasure you. to travel with. Hope you guys enjoyed and if there's any more videos ideas you want to see, let us know. Josh is already getting up, so I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!